Hi, and welcome back to another one of our concept series. Uh, the title of this one is called Creation Through Mutation. And this is a little different uh, than the last one we did. It's gonna be a little shorter. If you want a more full-fledged version of these concepts, uh, go see the one we posted two, about two weeks ago. This one focuses specifically on how we're going to uh, use directed evolution to uh, change phage so that they will target bacterial species um, that we wish them to target. So I introduced this in this, in this last video uh, that was, was much longer, the mutagenic tetracet, which is really the mechanism by which bacteria uh, overcome many of the measures we throw against them uh, essentially power by change. And the tetrasect is really four ways in which bacteria mutate, de novo mutation, transformation, conjugation, and transduction. And the four of these together don't necessarily occur simultaneously, but uh, species like E. coli, for example, can engage in all four at various points in its life cycle. And depending on the selective pressures that it faces, we'll use these to acquire or get rid of genes. This is essentially a mutation of its genome. Phage uh, don't have the same uh, uh, genetic exchange capabilities, but they do have the same ability to mutate. And so uh, this usually occurs with uh, de novo changes where uh, various uh, nucleic acids are uh, through air mechanisms, um, usually using the bacterial host as the, as the uh, mutagenic sort of entity, will acquire mutations. And their mutation rate, um, depending on the phage, can uh, be very similar in cases to that observed for bacteria. And so the premise is very simple. You might have a, uh, a phage that has um, uh, a certain genotype. Here it is green mutation. And, and perhaps it, that confers uh, the inability to lyse a bacterium, a target host in this case. Um, if you're using phage for therapy, for example, you'd have no efficacy because it doesn't kill its host, right? So it's a green phenotype but it can mutate. It's a very powerful uh, transformative mechanism of phage, right? And so uh, it's, its mutagenic ability here allows it to change at the genetic level. And, and here, so there's just conceptually indicate the red, uh, the red change. And here's a new phage then, and it confers a new phenotype to the phage. And so is it efficacious, right? Well. Um, you don't really know until you sort of can direct that process, and that's the key. So what we're doing at Taylor Labs is uh, we're playing around with mutation a little bit. This is a safe form of mutation because these viruses uh, do not jump to uh, eukaryotic cells like us. And so we have this system, this, con this uh, machine that we're going to be introducing in a series of videos. We're in chamber one, essentially. Uh, we have phage um, and we have a host, a bacterial host, and that host is permissive to infection. Uh, so it will allow infection to occur, allow a lot of phage to, to re be reproduced in this case, and uh, these phage will come out, but mistakes happen. These are infrequent mistakes, but they do happen. And in this particular case, uh, what will hopefully occur is, is a mutation that will allow that phage to have new properties. Now, many different properties might emerge, but the key here is that we have this chamber selection mechanism that uh, only allows uh, phages to come through, but not bacteria. And so in the second chamber, we have uh, a host that is impermissive to the green phage. However, some of these phages will have acquired mutation. They will get through this uh, sieve and at low frequency, but there they will infect this new host. Right? So here's a green phage bouncing off uh, this target host that they can't infect. 
But that red phage that got through was permissive. And when, when that phage infects the, the target, it will produce progeny and this, this will be a replicative cycle. And you will have the new phage, right? Adapted to your uh, target. And so we've been able to prove that this occurs in about five hours in this, in this automated mechanism of, of directed evolution. And this is just a little data where uh, we have a mouse model of infection. We put the uh, target uh, E. coli into these, these animals and um, that will get sick with a, a bacteremic or septic-like state. Um, when we use the old phage to treat them, there's little help. Uh, this is disease index, so there's little improvement in disease. But when we, we use the new phage, then um, we can substantially reduce the infections. This is kind of end level proof that uh, this is possible. So uh, some key highlights here is uh, mutagenesis is a bacterium's clandestine dark weapon, the mutagenic tetracept. And uh, that's how they really get around uh, the measures we throw at them, it's particularly the antibiotics. This drives resistance through this mutagenic tetracept. But phage have diversity and mutagenic potential as well. And the diversity is genetic diversity, so many different types, but the ability to change their genetic information uh, so that we can turn the tables on bacteria. And so it's a great potential for new drug discovery. And so if we sort of place the limitations or uh, the conditions of evolution on the system, we can control the process. We control the variants that come up uh, through directed evolution. So I hope you liked this uh, series and uh, it's the primer for some, some, some of the more experimental parts and, and engineering parts now that we're, we're gonna get into. So thanks for watching.